this program effectively catches hacker activities. But there is something different about this script. It's not written using the normal programming languages we know. In this video, I will show you how to leverage eBPF in finding threats and catching bad actors effectively. So what is eBPF? Short answer is it makes the kernel programmable without the need to reboot, insert modules, or recompile it. To learn how eBPF works and appreciate its benefits, we first need to understand how various functionalities are added inside the kernel in the traditional way. One way of modifying the kernel behavior is to insert kernel modules. For example, if an attacker wants to hide other files in the system, he will create and insert a kernel module that will filter the output of ls command within the kernel space. As an effect, malwares are now hidden from the user space program. While this seems ideal, creating and inserting kernel modules is very brittle, meaning it can crash the kernel if not done properly. If you need to change core functionality, such as scheduler behavior, a viable option is to patch the kernel. This is time consuming and needs to undergo several testing and review process. Applying patches also means rebuilding the kernel and rebooting the system, which can disrupt services. Now that we understand the traditional ways of adding kernel functionalities, let's see how eBPF solved those challenges. Conceptually, we can think that a Linux system contains three layers. These are the user space, kernel space, and the hardware. User space is where our applications and processes run. It needs to talk to the kernel space through a syscall. The kernel space is the one talking to the lowest level, which is the hardware. In order to modify the behavior of the kernel or how it reacts to events, eBPF hook points are inserted in different locations of the entire stack. Hook points are locations that you want to monitor. For example, a common use case is to monitor the exit point of a syscall. At this location, you will be able to see the real state of the call, such as the resolved paths, process information, and the type of call made. And depending on what rule you enforced, you can either deny or allow the call to proceed. To do that, modern kernel versions are shipped with eBPF support, meaning they are built in inside the kernel. A kernel that supports eBPF always have the verifier component and may optionally include the just-in-time compiler. Aside from that, you also need to have your eBPF program, which is the one we saw from the early part of this video. This program is the one that will decide on what to do on the events that are passing through the eBPF hook points. Back to the previous example, let's say we want to monitor malicious activities at the syscall exit point. What our eBPF program will do is to call the BPF syscall. After that, your program needs to pass through the verifier first. At this stage, the verifier will ensure that your eBPF program is safe to run. It must not crash the system. It must not loop forever. And it must have the necessary capabilities. Once it is approved by the verifier, it will now be passed to the just-in-time compiler to improve performance. After that, our eBPF program will now be able to run inside the kernel to monitor the syscall exit point. So as we see here, eBPF is designed to be safe and performant. That is the reason why a lot of organizations and large open source projects are adapting eBPF under the hood. Now that we have a basic idea on what is eBPF and how it works, let's now start creating our first eBPF program. Let's try to monitor activities under DevSHM since this is a common location for hackers to drop their malicious files and binaries. So we want our program to detect anything that runs under this path. First thing we need to do is to check if our kernel supports eBPF. Most modern kernels already have this, but to verify, we can check the current configuration of the running kernel using this command. Here we see that it contains the eBPF configuration variable, so we are confident that our kernel supports running eBPF programs. Next thing we need to do is to install the user space tools that will allow us to create eBPF programs. The first one is eBPF trace. This is a tracing tool that compiles scripts into eBPF bytecode. This is the high-level tool that allows us to interact with the eBPF system in the kernel space. After that, we need to install compiler tools as well. Let's verify if BPF trace is working by running this command that will monitor files that are being opened in the system. Don't worry about the syntax as we will discuss it shortly. But for now, let's run this and see what happens. The output is telling us that the polybar process on my machine is continuously opening the slash proc querying various system information. That makes sense because I have polybar configuration that displays different system statistics such as RAM and CPU usage. We see also the VM tools D is opening files related to block and network devices. I expect this as well since I'm running my Arch machine inside VMware Fusion. Now let's understand what is happening. We run BPF traces root, then we pass an expression containing our code. This first part is called the probe. We know that hooks are specific locations where we can monitor for events. Probes, on the other hand, is a specific way on how you will attach to a hook point. Trace point is a type of probe. 
Syscall is the category, which means we want to attach to syscall event that starts opening a file. After that, we have the following expression inside the curly braces. This will tell us what to do when we observe that event. It will print various information into standard out. The first information is the process name using the built-in variable called com. Then we also get the file name that is being opened. The file name is a pointer, so we need to convert it into a string. So when we run this, the very first line we see is that it is attaching the probe to the hook point. Then from here, we can see the flow of output. Now that we have an idea how BPF tracing works in practical terms, let's create our eBPF program that will monitor executions under DevSHM. Similar with other scripts, we need some interpreter at the top line. In this case, we will tell Linux to use the BPF tracing tool. Then we can immediately put our code below. We already have an idea how the code will look like based from the sample one-liner command a while ago. So first thing we need to put here is what probe we want to use. We want to monitor program executions, so it makes sense to look for probes having syscalls as category. To look for probes, we run the BPF trace command with dash L parameter. This will return a long list of output, so we need to filter this. Let's look for probes that will monitor events entering the exec VE syscall. We only got two result now, so let's use the first one. Let's just type here the same probe we found from the output. Then below that, we will put a condition which should be inside two forward slashes. If that condition resulted to true, then we will execute the code inside the curly braces. One nice thing about eBPF programs is, is that they also use very similar semantics with C programs. This means we can use functions like this one to compare strings. So we like to see if the path of the file name contains slash dev shm. If that is true, then we will print a message in standard out. The message will contain the process ID and the program being executed. As we see, this is very similar to the one-liner command we ran a while ago, but this time we put a condition inside the forward slashes. We can now add execute permissions to this script and run it. So if an attacker tries to run a malicious binary under that path, our eBPF script will be able to detect it. Since eBPF is running inside the kernel space, we will also be able to detect anything that is trying to hide from the process listing. This is just a simple demonstration of how eBPF works. There are more powerful ways on how to use it, such as blocking malicious programs and preventing other information gathering techniques like ftraces calls. It can also detect rootkits and other malwares trying to evade detection. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.